What is up people of the reefing world? Welcome to my channel. When I started reefing, I had a very hard time keeping SPS corals alive. They were not happy, a lot of polyps were not out. When I started this tank, the tank was full of acros. That was actually a big mistake. What was holding behind is pH. The longer I kept SPS, the more I had problems with pH. Every single time pH will drop if I had gas or anything would happen here in the tank. If pH goes low, I'll have problems, meaning some SPS will just perish, will be gone. So started looking more into raising pH. First thing what I did is I started opening windows and that actually worked out pretty good. I do live in a condo and there's a few of us here. If you probably have, if you live by yourself, you live in a huge mansion, you probably won't have as much problems that I do. But these problems actually help me figure out what these corals like. And uh, one of those things is pH. So as I said, opening windows is pretty easy. You can always do it. It'll raise pH in your tank for sure. The other thing that I did that didn't help actually much, but helped very little. I actually don't suggest people doing this because you'll have to drill a hole through your wall or on the side of your window. So you can put a line that goes outside and goes all the way to your intake or skimmer. It'll raise your pH very little, not a lot. Opening windows will do way better of a job. One thing that helped me a lot with raising pH, what I actually suggest people doing is dosing Kalkwasser to their tank. I know there's other ways of raising pH in your tank as well. I haven't tried all of them. Those two that I mentioned are tried. Those in Kalkwas are tried, which worked out to be the best way of doing it. There's wrong ways of dosing Kalkwaster, which uh, people used to do. They all used to put them in the ATO and do it that way, but that's not the perfect way of doing it. Lots of things can go wrong, so I suggest don't do it. Just dose it. Dosing pumps are pretty cheap these days. You can get a dosing pump real quick for basically nothing. There's lots of used ones out there. People are going out of their hobby, so it's not that hard these days to get a, a nice quality dose pump. What you can do, the more space you have, the better it will be. Again, if you don't have space, there's another option as well, which I'm using here. But if you have more space, a bigger container, you can put on the side of your tank or on the bottom underneath your stand. It'll be the best. You can just add Kalkwasser, mix it very good, and just dose as a solution that it's clear. I know some people out there are dosing Kalk slurry, but I cannot talk about it since I'm not doing it. There's lots of complications with doing that, but People are doing it for sure, successfully. I don't say it's not possible, I don't say it's bad. I'm just waiting on professionals to do the long-term work for all of us regular hobbyists to tell us how to do it the safest way possible. Again, I'm not talking about dosing cost clear in this video, I'm just gonna tell you about dosing clock washer. Again, what I used to do in this tank, I used to just dose it, regularly dose it. Just dose the top part of the solution, the clear part, and you can dose that straight to your tank. One thing, Kalkwaster is not as potent. So basically, you're gonna have to dose a lot so you can see a difference. The biggest difference you'll see if you have any pH meters, so you can see it on it, or if you have a controller, like Neptune or any other controller that tests its pH, I'll show you, you'll see that best in the graphs. The controllers, pH meters won't show you the graphs, but I'll show you what's the current pH. There's pH, little small, little sticks meters that you can buy as well. I never use that one, so I won't talk about it. By you dosing in Cockwasser, you'll be raising pH in your tank you'll be raising alkalinity and costume as well. As I said, you have to dose a lot so you can move all those numbers up. But if you want to move alkalinity and calcium a little bit up, you might want to dose something else. But if you want to raise your pH, Kalkwasser is ideal. Another way of raising pH will be just raising your alkalinity as well. If you keep your alkalinity above 8.5, above 9, your pH is going to come up as well. If you keep it lower, around 6.5, 7, 7.5, your pH is going to be lower. If you're a beginner and you don't have Kalkwasser right now with you, or all you do is those two part, I suggest for you to just ramp up the alkalinity a little bit higher and your pH is gonna raise just by you doing that. This tank, when I started this tank, this pH was around 7.8, 7.9. Lots of people tell you that's a good range, it's safe range, uh, you're gonna see lots of people being uh, successful with keeping SPS in that range, but I wasn't. I started being actually successful when I started those in Kalkwasser. So for me, I will never start an SPS tank maybe LPS, softy, 
and enemies, no problem. But SPS, if you want to keep hard corals, they love, they appreciate that high pH the most. I suggest everyone who wants to start keeping SPS to start dosing Kalkwasser as their first solution. And Kalkwasser is something that should stay. And then on top of that, you max out on that Kalkwasser, which again, some people are afterwards dosing Kalk Slurry, but you can always do the two part or calcium reactor. One thing about calcium reactor, calcium reactor will drop actually your pH in your tank. If you're maxed out in your Kalkwasser, with dosing that, you should be good to go. It won't affect it that much. Again, you know the best, depends how big is the room where you have your fish tank, depends how much you're feeding your tank. If you're feeding more, your pH is gonna be less. If you have more fish in your tank, your pH is gonna be less. That's why I know lots of people have very little of fish. They'll have high volume, they'll keep their tanks in big areas, and usually those tanks will have higher pH than us at home that have smaller tanks and we wanna uh, pack it full of fish. Yeah, as I said, I had a very hard time keeping SPS in that pH range when it was under 8. Right now, I do keep my pH above 8.3. It goes from 8.3 to 8.5. That's the range it is right now. Again, I started having success when my pH was above 8. That's when I've seen huge change in my tank. At first, I didn't know what was happening. People say 7.8 is fine. So I basically just scratched that and I started looking at other things. But if you have problems with growing SPS, try Kalkwasser. You can dose it, don't put it in your ATO. Just have dosing pump, dose it on the side, you'll be good to go. What I have in this tank is a Kalk Stir. Basically how Kalk Stir works, it stirs Kalkwasser in the bottom constantly, keeps that lotion on the top fully saturated. I do have pump that pumps from my ATO to the Kalkster and then it's fully saturated is coming out, going straight into the tank. I do suggest the pump that I have is Versa from Ecotech Marine. Why I like that pump is it's set it up to run either faster or slower. It makes a lot of difference, especially with the Kalkster that I have, because the Kalkster by itself cannot make that solution as fully saturated as it can be. So with me, setting up my pump to dose a little bit faster. It doses straight down into the Kalkwasser and stirs it every single time I'm pulling water from my ATO to the Kalkster. And that way it keeps my solution fully concentrated. You can use other pumps as well. This is just what I use and what I suggest. Some of the filtration that reefers are using these days can help raise that pH as well, which is why I like to use these two that I'm currently using on my system. And that is Refugium and my skin Skimmer as well. What skimmer will do, it actually won't raise pH, but it will end up raising it just because it's scrubbing all that CO2 out of your tank. So that's why I like it. I like it because it takes care of my filtration and has that pH benefit as well. The Refugium have an opposite cycle from my main lighting. I have it on a timer that kicks on just in the evening for five or six hours. Refugium won't let the pH since it's dropping during the night, won't let it bottom out like it usually does. That's why I prefer those two types of illustration, just because I mostly have SPS on this tank. That's about it. If you have any further questions, just put it down below. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as Refund the Roof. Subscribe and give it a like. See you in the next one.